Yeah. Well, good evening again, New Sardis. This is my second live feed for today, Monday. And uh, before, I just wanted to have a conversation, uh, particularly with the New Sardis family. Uh, but now is uh, time for Bible study. And what I have done in the past is to, uh, we have gone from book to book, verse to verse, sentence to sentence, and we have uh, studied the Bible together on a Monday evening. That has been the process that we have followed. Uh, we have not taken our study by subject as such, but we've gone by the books of the Bible, and we've gone by the verses, and we've gone by the word in each verse. And that's where we'll continue. That is the way we'll continue to do this Monday night Bible study, okay? Doesn't necessarily have a theme or a topic, you know, the, the, the verse, the, the word itself serves as a theme for this particular study. So we are um, going to ask you to consider this evening uh, 1 John chapter 2. And we'll look at the very first five verses of uh, this study this evening. Uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 1. And uh, <clears throat> and I'll just I'll just read this text for us, just in case we don't have a Bible that's handy. I will read uh, these verses for us. Okay, now here again I'm reading from First uh, John chapter two, uh, verses uh, one through five. All right. And it says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Verse 5 says, But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. All right, we'll stop reading right there and we'll just uh, have a little prayer, have a little talk with Jesus, and then we'll continue. Uh, Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of Bible study. We thank you for those who are listening, who will be listening. And I pray, God, that you would use me, uh, even now, God, to speak to your people. Uh, use these feeble lips of clay. Use this feeble mind of mine. And use this body, uh, uh, to, to do your bidding, to do your pleading from your word this day. God, I pray for the anointing to be present. Lord, that somebody will know that it is you who's speaking and not Pastor Tatum. Have your way, God, during these few moments that we shall spend together in the word. And I thank you in advance for what shall be accomplished. And I ask it. In Jesus' name, for his sake I pray, amen. First thing he says in this text as we began, he says, my little children, my little children. Now I wonder why he's referencing us as 
my little children. Well, when we think of little children, we think of those who are uh, not really capable of doing a lot of things for themselves. They they need a lot of help. All right, and and when God looks at us as his little children, he knows that we need a lot of help. And uh, of course now, God has promised he will take care of us and we'll do uh, what he's told us to do. Uh, but he looks at all of us as little children. No matter how old we are, no matter how long we've been on the Christian journey, he still looks at us as little children. And so it gives us a certain mindset as we begin this study this evening in God's Word that we are, in fact, a needy people. My little children, he says, uh, these things write I unto you that uh, ye sin not. And we do know, we do know that he's writing to believers. He's not writing to the world. He's writing to Christians. He's writing to those who have confessed him uh, as their Lord and Savior. He's writing to those who have asked, asked him to forgive them of their sins. All right? And, of course, that implies a lot of other things when he, he says... My little children, right eye unto you. Some of which we may discuss this evening. We may leave some of it out. But uh, when he says, my little children, and when he says, right eye unto you, we know who he's talking to. We know who this uh, uh, book is addressed to. We, we know who he's talking to as he talks about uh, uh, these things in the book of First John. He says uh, uh, that ye, he said, I write unto you that ye sin not, all right? And, and if any man sins, well, he says, I write unto you that you don't sin. In other words, I'm writing to you hoping that when you read these things and understand these things that I'm talking to you about, that... Uh, you will, you will seek to really live for me. You will seek to live a righteous life. You will seek to live a godly life. You will seek to live a life that is pleasing in my sight. That, that's what he's saying to us. He says, I write unto you that ye sin not. All right? God is still looking for righteous people. Matter of fact, he says he's coming back after a church that is, uh, uh, has been cleansed. Uh, a church that without, uh, without blemish, without spot. He's coming back for a church who's been washed in his blood. All right? But he also gives us an escape if we fail to uh, not keep his word. If we miss the mark, and that's really what sin is, sin is missing the mark. And if you miss the mark, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> because he goes on to say that if, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Now, what, what, what is an advocate? What is an advocate? An advocate in this context, in, in, as, uh, an advocate as John is, dis, is talking and describing, an advocate is, is like a defense attorney in the physical world. He comes to our ref, refuge to represent us, all right, uh, before a jury, and in, in this case, before a holy God. Jesus is our advocate. And when we do sin, when we do mess up along the way, guess what? Jesus is our defense attorney. 
he steps up to the plate and he says to our Heavenly Father, uh-uh, no, God, we can't condemn him. We can't send him her or her to hell. I've already covered them with my blood. They have already confessed. They've confessed their sins. They have confessed me. And when, when Jesus makes a statement like that to the Father, the Father is bound to take heed, to listen what his Father is saying. And he's speaking on our behalf. That, that's why uh, uh, the Bible also says that uh, if you deny him, he will deny you. In other words, if you deny God, our Heavenly Father, then Jesus, who's going to has to present us to the Father, he will deny us. And if he denies us, then, you know, our plight is not looking too good for the future. <laughs> so I want God to, uh, through his son Jesus, to always acknowledge me as uh, his his child. And consequently, uh, I will be forgiven of my sins. Heavenly Father will embrace me once again. And so we have an advocate, he says. You have an advocate with the Father, somebody who will stand as an attorney and plead for our cause. And he actually mentions who it is when he says we have an advocate with the Father. He goes on to say, Jesus is our advocate. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ the righteous. He is our advocate. Aren't you glad you have an advocate? If you don't have an advocate with God, our Heavenly Father, you need to get one today because he is the only one that has uh, died for you. He is the only one that has shed his life's blood for you. He is the only one that can atone for you. And so if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, uh, today, I trust that you will do that because there is none other uh, name given among men. According to Acts uh, chapter 4, I believe it is, there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So Jesus, yeah, Jesus is all that. He's all that and a bag of chips <laughs> uh, because he's the only one that can uh, cleanse us from all of our sin. And that's what John is saying here. Jesus, the righteous, is our advocate before the Father. If if we sin, we have an advocate. Now, that, that goes to speak to uh, that crowd who says that uh, once you're saved, uh, you never commit another sin. Well, that may be true as far as the spirit man is concerned, but we have to remember we still have that Adamic nature, and he goes with us wherever he goes, wherever we go. We lay down at night, he lays down. When he gets up in the morning, when we get up in the morning, he gets up himself, and as soon as, soon as uh, we wake, there that devil is once again through that old Adamic nature. And he's ready to do anything that displeases God the Father. So I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I've got an advocate, that I have an advocate. It kind of reminds me when I was a child, my grandmother lived with us uh, in our home all the days I can remember uh, until my grandmother died. She was there with us. And grandma was always one who would speak up for us when our, our, our father, our mother would, would want to chastise us for our wrongdoing. Grandma would always be there. And uh, she would say, Madeline, leave that child alone. He, he's just a child. He don't always uh, know what he's doing wrong. You know, g give him a break sometime. You don't have to whip him every time he does something wrong. Grandma was an advocate for us. 
Grandma was an advocate for me. She stood up for me and uh, uh, would tell my mother not to spank us. And that's what, that's what Jesus is for us as, as, as believers when we mess up, right? If we, would, if we were never going to mess up, then God would have never made that provision for us. But remember how he starts off this verse. He says, little children, meaning that he knows that we're going to need an advocate. We're going to need uh, someone like Jesus to speak up for us when we mess up. And so Jesus, our advocate, is always there when we mess up. Hope we don't. Hopefully we don't mess up. But when we do, we've got somebody who has covered us in his blood. Jesus, the righteous one, has covered us in his blood. So John tells us about that as, we, as he starts out. And then he says, and thereby we do know, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Well, let me, let me slow down right here and pause right here a minute. Somebody said, we can't keep all the commandments. If Jesus could have kept the commandments, rather, if man could have kept the commandments, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. Well, that's that's true in a sense. That is really true in a sense. Uh, because no man could keep the law. God knew that. And, and God here again gives us another way of escape. I want you to turn, if you have your Bibles handy with you, or if you got your cell phones or whatever, got your Bible on your cell phone, turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And, let, and let's read what he says here. We're still talking about the commandments. We're talking about keeping his word. We're talking about obeying his word. But let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 22 right quick. Starting, I think, at verse uh, 36, I believe it is. And this is when a lawyer approached Jesus and asked him the question. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, and I'm reading from the King James Version, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, uh, this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, he says, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. All the law. Now, that, 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 I'm going to stop right there. But this is essential to understanding keeping the commandments. He says, on these two, what two? The two where he says you should love the Lord God with all your heart and your mind and your soul and, and love your neighbor as unto yourself. Those are the two commands he's referring to right here. And he says, on these two hang all the law and the prophet. Now, let's go back over here to 1 John uh, again and look at this verse, uh, what he said. He says, uh, uh, verse, verse uh, 3, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, how we say we can't, we, no man can keep all the commandments, Okay. But at the same time, hearing what Jesus says through Matthew to us about the commandment, yeah, maybe we can. He said the first, the, the, the greatest commandment is to love uh, God with all your heart and your mind and soul, and to love, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, uh, and he says, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, 
on the commandment of love. If you if you can obey the commandment to love one another as Jesus has told us to love, then all of the other commandments he's given is wrapped up in these two right here. So if you love, if you do love, you are keeping his commandments, okay? And he says if you keep his commandments, that's how we know that we know him. Now, John is going to say a little later on, and we'll talk more about it when we get there. John is going to say a little later on, he says, I know I have passed, I have passed from death unto life because I love the brethren. I, I know I'm a child of God because I love the brethren. I love the sister in too. I love the body of Christ. I love the church. And John is saying if you can demonstrate the love that to Matthew talked about in, in uh, Matthew 22, loving, your, loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself, then, hey, you've got this thing covered. Love is the essential commandment. We have to love one another. I know I love him. I know I love the brethren. And if we know that we love him, this is the catalyst by which we can continue to grow to be more like Jesus. This is how we become more perfected. How can a man say, uh, I love God? Well, that's for another time, too. John is going to talk about this. How can you say, you love your brother who you see every day, uh, but hate God who, uh, uh, how can you say you love God who you've never seen and, and hate your brother who you see every day? He, the, the scripture says you're lying, the truth is not in you. So this love factor is the essential. This is the main component to the keeping of commandments. And, and brothers and sisters, keeping, the command, keeping these commandments that uh, Matthew's talking about and John's talking about, talking about is not talking it, it's living it, all right? And, and John is going to talk more about love. He's going to get into it more extensively. And when we get to that verse, we will talk about this. Love is something that you do. It's not something you say. Love is something that you do. Love is something that you demonstrate. If you have love, if you, Listen, the Bible says God is love. If you have God, you can't help but to have love because God is love. Don't say God has love. No, everything about the existence of God is about love. He is love from head to toe, north to south, east to west, up and down. God is about love. And if we are obeying those two commandments, loving our neighbor, loving God, demonstrating that through what we do, then I think we're going to be all right. We're all right with God. And so he, he says here in verse 3, in verse, uh, verse three, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. And now when you look at this verse again. I hope you'll think about Matthew chapter 22. Verses uh, 36 through 40. Then he goes on to say. Verse 4. He that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. I already said, if you don't love the brethren, and I'm not saying love in terms of speaking, oh, I love him, I love her, that, that that's not going to get it. It has to be love from the heart. Only God knows the heart, brothers and sisters. Only God can see into the heart. First Samuel, I think, around chapter 15, talks about, Man looks at the outer, but God looks at the inner. God can 
uh, look at the inside and tell you what's going on. You know, the only way we know what's going on on the inside is based on how you are acting on the outside. And oftentimes that can really be deceiving uh, because, you know, there are a lot of hypocrites <laughs> and, and a lot of pretenders. I think Temptations talked about the great pretender, I believe. I uh, need Brother Sparks here to tell me about, you know, whether they would have won this song, that song or not. Uh, oh, yes, I am the uh, great pretender. But uh, there are a lot of great pretenders that in this world who talk about love, but they never demonstrate this love. And he says, uh, uh, he just says, I know him and keep if not his commandments. He's a liar. And the truth is not in him. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ. And then that isn't that what he said in First John chapter fourteen? He said Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Didn't he say that? Yeah he did. In John chapter fourteen. So he says, if you if you know know Jesus and if you keep his commandments, he says, then you all right uh, with with God, but whosoever keepeth his his but whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we know Him. So you see, if you've got that love in you, you've got the catalyst by which you can continue to grow in the knowledge and the grace of God. But if you don't have the love, you don't have the essential. You don't even have the foundation by which you can grow. You, you're not going to grow in anything if you don't have the essential, if you don't have the love. You, you, know, you, you, you know things that if, if, uh, if your heart is not beating, your body is what? It's dead. If your heart's not beating, it's dead. And that's like John is saying here, if you don't have love, the rest of you is just dead as far as that's concerned. So if you have the love of God, if you receive Jesus Christ truly, and you have uh, the love of God in your heart, you have what you need in order to grow in the many, many other areas that we need to grow in. And there's so many areas that we need to grow in. We need to grow in our patience. We need to, uh, certainly we need to grow in our love. We need to grow in our patience. We need to grow in our, in our uh, forgiving one another. We need to grow in, uh, in, in our giving. We need to grow in uh, the Word, un understanding the Word, and grow in meditating on the Word. We, we need to grow in our, uh, uh, love for brother, our brothers and our sisters. We, there are a lot of areas that we need to grow in, that we need to be perfected in. And if you have the love of Christ, you have the tool by which you can grow in the knowledge and in the uh, love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what John is saying to us right here. You have what it takes to grow. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. If you have the desire to obey God, if you have the desire to do what it is the word tells you to do, okay, uh, as he said, and the truth of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, look, I'm supposed to be looking at verse 5. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the love, that love is a key factor. If you don't have the love of God, if you're not demonstrating the love of God, if you're not practicing the love of God, you, you really need to go back and do your first works over again. Because if you don't have the love of Jesus abiding in your heart, 
you you are missing some things. You're missing the most essential. You missing the most important of, of all uh, uh, that you should have in order to be the kind of child of God that God wants us to be. Amen. So let us stop right there with these five verses in in First John. Uh, if you have questions about anything that I've said this evening, uh, please write them down, and uh, you can send them to me. Uh, send them via uh, email, or you can send them text message. You can uh, send them Facebook. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them to me, and I'll be more than glad to try to answer the questions for you. But through all that we've said this evening, we're finding that, number one, that Jesus is our advocate. If we mess up along the way, we won't lose our salvation. You will just lose your fellowship with Jesus. And that's what all, all of the, uh, uh, trilogy, the trilogy of the writings of John is about. It's about intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about being saved or not being saved. That's not the theme of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. The theme of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John is about having intimacy with God our Father, about having the kind of relationship that helps us to grow, to continue to grow uh, in the relationship that we have uh, with our Father. Uh, and somebody asked you about First John. That's what John is about. John is about growing, growing in our intimacy. It's growing in our relationship, in our fellowship. Not salvation, but growing in our fellowship. Growing in our relationship with him. And so, if you know him, you've got his love. If you've got his love, it should be being demonstrated. And if you have his love and it's demonstrated, you have the catalyst by which you can grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, and, and there are many areas, like I say, we need to grow in because we don't, we don't come into this world perfect. No, we come into this world with everything that we have in order to become perfect, but we don't come into this world uh, perfect. I come into this world I had ten fingers, ten toes, two ears, nose, mouth. Uh, had all of the necessary components to grow and to be a full-grown man. But I didn't come like that. I had to grow into it. And that's uh, similarly, that's what it's like uh, from a spiritual perspective. When we're born again... We have to grow into the spiritual man that God wants us to grow into. And if we have his love, we have what it takes to grow and to become all that uh, God wants us to be. And that's the, it, it, the essence of what John has talked to us about this evening. Uh, like I say, if you have any questions, I can help you. Please feel free. My email address is uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, 001 at msn.com that's Holy Spirit 001 at msn.com uh, and my phone is 216-272-3491 and using the email or the phone number you can text me write me I mean call me and ask any questions you want to ask about anything that I've talked about here as I go live for my uh, uh, Bible studies from here on in. Also on Sunday morning I'll be live. Have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll be more than happy to try to answer the questions, okay? This has been the Monday Night Bible Study, and remember we're in the book of First John, chapter 2. We'll pick up next Monday where we've left off. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. And I am praying for you during these challenges.